Good morning. Good morning. It's Monday. It is Monday. How Monday after a long weekend. It is Monday after a long weekend. Yeah. How are you feeling? Well, uh, you know, feeling better. It was a long four days as far as trying to get through a little bit of a cold that we had. Yeah. But you're better today? Yes. Good. I'm How was your workout? Today. It was nice to get a workout in. Yeah. yeah. We haven't been since Monday. Monday? I thought it was Wednesday. No, Monday. Because Tuesday I had that event. Wednesday, you didn't feel good, so we didn't go. Right. Thursday, we were at the gym. Friday, you didn't feel good, so I mean, we were not at the gym. We were at your sister-in-law's right. in Jersey for Thanksgiving. And then Friday, you didn't feel good, so we didn't go. And then we didn't go all weekend. Hmm. So it's been since Monday. Wow. I know. I remember, I'm, I'm surprised I remember how to do it. That's crazy. So mm -hmm. what did you work out today? Today, I did shoulders and triceps, which was the next thing in line when I, you know, when I hadn't gone. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And how was it? It was good? Yeah, it was good. That's good. I did arms today and I did a little bit of core, so that was nice. As you guys can probably tell, I sound a little nasally. I have a little bit of sinus thing going on. I maybe should go work for a 900 number or something. Hey. <laughs> no? No. Oh, okay. Not that then. <laughs> um, I wanted to show you guys the, my sourdough I have. You can see the air pockets. I have it rising. I um, got some starter from a friend of mine, and um, so I'm trying to make bread. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to bake this one, and then there's another one today. That um, so there's another one the same uh, half of the dough that I'm gonna punch back down and let it rise again. So I'm gonna bake this one today, I think, and we'll see. Is but, it going down since you un uncovered it? I don't know. It feels like it is. Maybe because I set it down in the air. And you the know. cold counter. Oh yeah, the cold counter. Maybe I don't know. So maybe you shouldn't do that. Well, what am I gonna do with it? I don't know. But I'll put <laughs> it on a, uh... So anyway. This is the bread that I'm going to make today, so hopefully that'll be yummy. It smells really good. It smells like sourdough. So if anybody needs sourdough starter, uh, let me know. I have some. I can send it to you. Then my friend mailed it to me, and it got here just fine, and I fed it a couple of times, and now I have bread. So I'm super excited about that, so that'll be fun. Well, have the, 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 uh, the traveling uh, sourdough, sourdough starter. Exactly. Right. Um, so we wanted to share with you guys, we have a documentary, we, we watched it a couple of times, um, and we watched it for a second time over the weekend, called In Defense of Food, and it's two hours long, so it's a really long documentary, but it's a really, really good one, and it's actually where we got the um, eat food, not too much, mostly plants, that's yes. from In Defense of Food, and his, the guy who does it, his name is Michael Pollan, so um, we, we learned more about where you can get complete sources of protein, from um, plants, and so um, Russ, did you want to talk some about that? Uh, I do. Protein? I just want to make sure that we're not pixelating. So just give me a second. Uh oh. Uh, make sure you mute it. <laughs> there, there we go. We okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> when being plant-based, or they use the term vegan, but uh, we don't use that term too often. Uh, we don't use vegan because yeah. we feel like it's uh, it has a lot more baggage to it than being whole food plant-based. Right. Right. Um, so the key is when you are uh, plant-based, you do have to make sure you get protein. And the question is, well, how am I going to make sure I get enough in the right kind of protein? And the key is the right kind of protein, um, because your body, you you have uh, what is it, 24 essential, um, 24 amino acids. Right, and but your body can make all but nine. All but nine, which are the essential amino acids. And when you eat things like red meat, fish, uh, I, I believe poultry as well, they all have those nine essential amino acids. However, when you eat plants. It's not the same situation. So, so a lot of times what you have to do is you have to combine a couple of things to get the complete protein. A good example is corn, which, is, which has been a, a source for uh, Mexico as a main source of protein for them. They actually have something called a, a I don't know what a it's golf called. or something like that, which is like, it's like this fungi corn that they add to the regular corn, which gives them the missing amino acids. We're not going to go there, folks, because it just looks nasty. It looks really gross. <laughs> yeah. But there are different combinations that you can do that will make sure you get the essential amino acids in your protein source. So I just wrote down a couple of the combinations, and I have uh, four for you right here. If you combine, and this is a very British dish, uh, which is beans on toast. Very British, yeah. Yes. Um, another one would be adding rice with lentils or with beans. Uh, and again, when you use rice, you want to use the whole grain rice, not, right. not the Brown bleached. Rice. Yeah, not the bleached product that you get you know, in restaurants or whatever. Uh, you can add beans with pasta. Which is an Italian dish. Right, which I'm all for. <laughs> <laughs> or you can add, you can also um, use corn with beans as well. Um, <coughs> excuse me, you can tell I'm still getting over the cough a little bit. 
Um, and then the, the thing to remember, uh, a peanut butter and, and wheat a toast, a, a wheat bread. We, we are so it seems that. like grains with, with beans is, is the kind of the main beans idea. And, nuts, and yeah. it seems like every single um, nationality, if you go to different parts of the world, they've come up with a way to create that kind of dish where you right. get whole food, a whole protein from plants. Exactly. And now, you know, you can get it from meat. Absolutely, you can. And that's a lot of times where doctors will say, oh, just get because it's easy. But the problem with that is then you get all of the drawbacks that come with meat, which is the colorectal cancer and the, uh, the heart disease and the cholesterol and all of that. Right. So while it's a little more challenging, uh, challenging, I guess, in so much as as Americans, we have to think a little harder. Um, I think it's better to go ahead and do it with plants. Right. And a lot of these combinations make for great meals. They do. I mean, you know, beans and pasta or be, uh, lentils on rice. And uh, I've not tried beans on toast, but I'm probably going to try it at some point to see what that <laughs> I looks don't know like. If I can and eat they it. were using, like, basically refried beans when they showed it. And, were they? Yeah. I don't know. So I, I don't know if I would do that. But um, certainly the black beans, especially if the black beans, if you leave it where it's a little bit more saucy. Yeah, you know, that would be good, um, would be good. on yeah. toast. Yeah, uh, and, and then basically as you do, when you're looking at your sources of protein on a plant-based diet, they're coming from nuts. Uh, they use, I don't know why they list peanut butter separately, um, but, but they, they do, do. <laughs> seeds, grains, and legumes. Now, when I, whenever we talk about peanut butter, I always want to recommend, I always want to point out that it needs to be organic. And, um, it needs to have only. It can only have two ingredients in it. It can only have he two. Says. This is the law, as I write it today. <laughs> He's so adamant. <laughs> and that is peanuts. And if you like salt, salt. You can also get it without salt. But if it has salt, it's not the end of the world. And what that means is that the peanut butter is going to be separated. It's going to have the oil at the top. Right. And it took me a long time to get used to eating that kind of peanut butter because I really like the regular hydrogenated with the sugars, with the and, sugars all, yeah. and all. Like I really like that kind of peanut butter. But it's just not healthy for you. It takes it takes a perfectly good healthy thing and makes it bad for you. Exactly. So that's not preferable. Right. And, but, and there are some um, other essential elements that you need to get in your diet. But I think what we should do is maybe um, post it. We are going to have that article, I guess you're going to. Yeah. Post. So there's an article that talks about all this stuff, the the amino acids and and the protein, complete protein and stuff. I will post it on our uh, R&R Journey page, right. so make sure you've liked that page so you can see it. And if you um, follow that page, you see that this over the weekend I made um, roasted red pepper soup, oh. which turned out really, oh, really that good. Was good. So I posted some pictures and the recipe to that on the R&R Journey page. Right. So if you're interested in that, but um, if you have you know two hours and you want to learn this stuff directly and not our summary of it. Um, again, the online it's on both on I think YouTube and on um, Netflix, and I saw it even at the library um, called In Defense of Food. It's a really uh, good documentary. has a lot of information about how you can get the protein sources you need um, through plants, and it does talk some about you know meat sources and that kind of thing. But I do feel like it's a it's a really good place to go. It's, it's a good foundation, is what it is. Yeah, it know? is, good. and. You know, like I said, that's where we got our what we say. You know, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. So, so that's it's really a right, good place to go right. for. So even though he does talk about he does eat meat once in a while, but he talks in terms of like instead of eating meat three or four times a day a, a week, he'll eat it once every couple of weeks, or maybe once a week, or once a month. It's always like it's a kind of like the way we do. Right. He's vegan-ish. Right. Exactly. There's Sean. Hey, hey Sean. Sean. Hey, good Sean. to see you. Right. So yes, he's vegan-ish. He's kind of like we are. Um, yeah. Right. And so, and that's good. It was, it was a good, um, and it's the second time we watched it actually. Yeah. And, and so one thing I learned from it too, is that, and I, this kind of scares me, processed food makes up 60% of the standard American diet. Right. How frightening is that? Right. 60%. And, it, and this is, and it was in that document, he also talks about only eat food that can spoil. Yeah, you know? we've mentioned that before here. Right, right. If it doesn't go bad, it's not good for you. Exactly. Yeah, and they said in that documentary too that um, Americans eat a thousand percent more sugar now than we did 200 years ago. Right. Can you um, even fathom a thousand percent? Right. What do you talk about? One can of soda a, a day, and they talked about how much, and they showed how much sugar that was. And uh, was that the same? I think it was that. We watched a couple of them over the weekend. Yes. So. Yeah. So that was uh, Sean. Drinking water while sitting, not standing. I'm. I can drink water while standing. Yeah, yeah. I. I, I don't understand the. Uh, 
Okay, so anyway. Yeah. Um, processed food, not good. Yes, processed, processed food not good is not good. And, and you know, it's funny, in, in the um, documentary, what he talks about is when you go to the supermarket, the stuff you find on the outer edges is the stuff you want to eat. Everything else in the middle which we know all the process like we know that right. and they trick you because they make it pretty colors and stuff right and it and makes it, your brain think that well, it's good for you well and they show you you read the boxes it's fortified with this no fat fortified with that and basically what you're saying is we took all the value out of the food so now we have to put it back in yeah so it's very interesting that's my email don't worry about it it's okay. fine when my computer starts showing email coming in it always freaks him out a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yes, Coke and Pepsi are. Thanks, Sean. They are making uh, America's a beast. They're horrible for yes, us, definitely. Absolutely. But, yeah, it's so, oh, so I also wanted to share, there's a thing called TMAO, which your body creates from red meat, and it causes your cholesterol to stick to the walls of your arteries. So even though you can get the amino acids you need from mm -hmm. um, red meat, it has all these downsides that you have to be aware of, so... Right. Be careful was, about that. There was the other show that we were watching prior to that, the third episode one. Of the food one, yeah. The food one on Netflix that talked that they showed you like different sources of fat and how you have to have fat in your diet. And there was like, and I don't remember the exact details, but like six or seven different samples of the fat that you can get in, in the diet. All of them were liquid form at room temperature except for one. And that's the, that's the fat for me. Yeah. So. And that, you know, that's important. And when they hydrogenate it to make it liquid form at room temperature, that doesn't count. Right. So hydrogenated uh, oils, not good for you. Not good so, for you. Yeah. But we, we wanted to just share with you really quickly about the sources of protein where you can get complete proteins, which like beans, uh, like Russ said, beans and wheat or beans and grains together give you complete sources. So right. definitely start looking for that. I did have someone this weekend say that it would be helpful for him if he could have like a grocery list. So what I may try to do is kind of create a list of some of the staples that we keep in the house and put post those on the RMR journey so that you guys can see kind of what we have. Because I did not go shopping to, to create the soup I made this weekend. I just pulled stuff, stuff that we had yeah. in the house. Exactly. So I'll make a list so that you guys can, you know, start adding some of those to your to your house because it's hard to eat them if you don't have them. Right, exactly. So there, they're a lot easier just to grab. Yeah. Exactly. So, um... I don't know if we'll be back when we do our uh, meal this evening. We'll right. see how it feels. If it's dark, it's hard to do it because we don't have enough light in the kitchen to really effectively do. But um, I'll post pictures either way of what we have for our fasting day, day meal today. And when the bread gets done, I'll post some pictures of that of what it looks like when it's, when it's finished as well. Right. Yeah, it's Which, definitely coming in. He's he's complaining because it's, it's flattening out. So right. maybe I'll have to let it rise some more again too. But... And with that, I think we're going to go run, hop in the shower. Right. So we want to say what Michael Pollan says. Right, which is eat food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, Have guys. a good day, guys. Thanks for joining us.